Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in for another Elden Ring boss guide. This time we're going in on Commander Nile up here in Castle Saul in the mountaintops area. So, this fight can be very tough, but is very important as you do get the other half of the Halig Tree Medallion after you defeat Commander Nile up here in the battlements. So getting on the other side of this boss is very important to do if you want to go fight Melania later on. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about the best moments to attack, I'm going to talk about how to parry, as well as I'm going to talk about the right moments to roll. With that said, let's get started. Now, you will see that he will summon two, two guys alongside him, two soldiers, two banished knights. I like to run over here to the one on the right and immediately start attacking it, as this is the tougher one of the two that are here. Basically, I just burst it a bunch, let him do his own combo, and then I run in hit him again. We just keep repeating the same cycle until it's dead. I do recommend killing the one with the two straight swords first as he is the tougher of the two. And he's a lot more aggressive and he does a lot more damage because he has two swords. So once you get on the other side of that one, you can focus on the next one here too. This one's not as bad. You fought this type of guy many times throughout the game at this point, so you should be able to handle it. They are tough all the same, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. You've already made it this far. Something else to keep in mind that you, is that you can use Bewitching Branches on these Banished Knights. They will turn to your side and they will help you take out Commander Nile if you choose to do so. I prefer to not. I like to do the fight solo and so that's why I'm showing my tactics here now. I was hoping you would not do that one specifically. Just like Commander O'Neill does over in the Aeonian Swamp of Kaywid. Commander Nile will buff these guys as well, so be aware of that. It will increase their attack and defense. But I would say if you are having a difficult time killing Nile, I would say it's worth taking a moment to use Bewitching Branches. After those, uh, those guys are either on your team or dead, he will go into uh, this phase or basically he activates his frostbite and electric attacks. You can see that he'll jump up in the air, he'll hit you with the prosthesis. His uh, his right leg is actually non-existent. He has a bit of a, uh, a prosthetic leg. And it does a lot of lightning damage when he slams it around on the ground. So you need to make sure that you dodge at the very last moment against it. You can see here that he does have a dash and the dash itself is parryable. You can parry the, uh, the halberd. I did it a little early, so I missed it, but I'm going to try to show it off anyway. Let's see if we can get him to do it again. Do another dash for me. I want to parry it. I do recommend not parrying for that attack specifically, but I want to show that it is possible. And then, of course, his basic halberd attacks are very parryable too. I'm failing you miserably. There you go. The battle standard there is extremely parryable, so there is that option for you too. Here comes this attack. I recommend just dodging, you know, better than I did there, and then getting out of the way. A lot of the time after that attack, he'll do the uh, the frostbite ground slam too, so you want to make sure you're nowhere near him at that moment. Another parry. You can see that all of his basic attacks are parryable. Here's the dash. I failed the parry, sucks, but it's fine. It's fine. Here it comes again. There it is. Now, if you're not doing parrying, if you're just focusing on magic, you can just spam your magic away. It will make him dash at you a lot more, but you can just kind of use your magic and just be done with it. He doesn't dodge because of how heavy he is. So that's a thing too. After he does use his big attack there, where he just kind of goes crazy for a moment, you're able to land a lot of damage on him because he's disabled for a moment. He basically tires himself out, which allows you to just really go ham on him for all the strikes possible. And so that's something you can do there. I do recommend though, when he does that dash, dodge out of the way. He'll do the frostbite ground slam and then the, the a couple of slashes sometimes. If he does the slashes, that's when you can run in and land a couple hits too, just like that. And then you can back off. Just watch out for the, the, the counter attack that he does there. It's often that specific ground pound. Let's try that again. This is one of the best moments to attack him if you're focusing on dodging. And then you can just get out of, way, get out of the way there. 
And so those are the best moments to attack him. And we have seen his entire moveset already, so there's nothing else to really talk about as far as his moves go. I've already shown how to dodge them and when the right moments to attack are. So let's just keep repeating this cycle until he's dead. We land our attack. We back off. Let me land another parry. Let me show you the parries once again. All of his basic attacks are indeed parryable. So you can just focus on that. I got a little close for comfort there. You see what I mean? All of his basic attacks, very parryable. So if you're using a, you know, a parry-based weapon, that's something you can very much so do. With that said, let's finish off with another big dodge attack so you can see that as well. This is actually going really well. This is exactly what I wanted him to do. Here comes the slash. We wait for it to finish. We run in. We hit him. And if he's still alive at that point, you just back off and repeat that cycle over and over again. And then he turns into dust. You have a sight of grace here. You get veteran's prosthesis. And then you can go up the stairs. And you'll see a little bit of a path up to the, up an elevator, up to the top of the battlements. And you'll get the second half of the Haley Tree Medallion upon defeating him. Now that that's over, I wish you luck in this fight. It can be very tough, especially if you uh, have a hard time with the Banished Knights. But you've already made it to this point in the game, so you should be able to do it just fine. Just have patience, fight them at the right times, and get through this. With that said, I'm out of here for now. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope this does help you. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you soon for more.